Good morning. Strength is commanding the wind and the sea to obey. Strength is wielding a slingshot in the face of a raging giant. Strength is accepting vulnerability from inside the boat. Strength is standing in solidarity with the powerless. Strength is turning a cheek. Strength is loving an enemy. We come to worship a God who redefines our vision of strength. Welcome to this time of worship on the Lord's Day at the Wallace Presbyterian Church. We are glad all of you are here today. It's a very special day in the life of this congregation as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism with Cooper Hall and his family. And we're so glad all of you are here to be a part of that. Um, lots of announcements in our bulletin about things coming up. Um, next Sunday from 10 to 1045, I hope that you'll come into the fellowship hall and enjoy some refreshments and we will surround our church members and folks who uh, continue to recover from Hurricane Florence. Just a chance to say we love you and we're there for you and find out what we can do to help. So that's 10 to 1045 next week. I'd like for us to practice our singing. Uh, again, today the Old Testament lesson is a responsorial setting of uh, Psalm 1. So if you'll look in your bulletin and find one of the inserts that has the music at the top, uh, when Christy leads the Old Testament um, reading, we will sing and then read in unison, sing the refrain, read in unison and sing the refrain. So I'm going to ask Vera to play through this tune and then we'll sing it through once. Let's try it. Happy are they who trust me. We have two minutes for mission today, one from Zach Castine and one from Carol Steen. Which order do you want to go? Good morning. I have two announcements for, from the Presbyterian women. This Friday, we will be celebrating with the world the World Day of Prayer. Uh, the service will be held at Rockfish, and our church is in charge of the program, so you need to come and see our marvelous acting uh, that will be going on uh, during this. And then um, on March 10, you can see in the back of your bulletin, there are the two announcements. And on March 10, we will be having what I would call a potluck supper, but y'all call it a covered dish supper. And that will be um, our annual Presbyterian Women's Mission Program. And this year we will have a special speaker who is the, um, the chairman of a disaster recovery alliance something that is close to all of us. So please plan to join us for both of those events. Good morning. If y'all haven't been into the Curry Building this morning, let me tell you, it, it smells like heaven in there. That's about as close as you can get to it. Um, we have some stiff competition for our chili cook-off this afternoon. I wanted to let everybody know the winner will take home the golden ladle. <laughs> I made it. I hope it goes back home with me. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to explain how things are going to work right after worship. Uh, Dr. Phil is going to do uh, include the, um, the blessing in his benediction. Um, and after that, if you are interested in participating, in voting for the chili, I think we have 11 or 12 pots in there. But we'll have uh, everybody exit through this door. Um, your donation will earn you a bowl, a spoon, and two tickets apiece. After you go around and sample all of the uh, chilies, and they're spread out in there so there won't be a line and shouldn't be backed up too bad. After you've, after you've tested, you'll write down the number of the pot that you like the best, and you'll come throw it in the ballot box. After that, uh, you're welcome to go get a full bowl of whatever you'd like. We also have cheese, sour cream, and cornbread in there as well. So good luck, Dad. 
field. <laughs> Anybody else that put theirs up against mine? Um, and we'll see y'all this afternoon. Thank you. Please join me in the opening sentences found in your bulletin that are inspired by Psalm 1. Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. In all that they do, they prosper. Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. Let us celebrate God's mercy and justice. Amen. Please join us for our first hymn, number 482, Baptized in Water. Confession today, we're using a litany for the renewal of baptismal vows. When someone is baptized, it's a wonderful opportunity for each of us to renew our own baptismal vows, whether we took them for ourselves or someone claimed them for us. So I invite you to join me in the responsive reading. I will start with Romans 6, 3 through 4. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. As God's baptismal people, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil that rebel against God? We renounce them. 
Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? We renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ? Yes, we trust in him as our Lord and Savior. Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciples, trusting in his promises, obeying his word, honoring his church, and showing his love as long as you live? Yes, God helping us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, uphold us by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in us your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Plant us by the streams of living water. Amen. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. May the blessing of God Almighty be with us always. Amen. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy in our lives. fourth Sunday of the month during the school year, we take up an offering that is combined with the offerings from 20 or more churches and businesses and individuals. It is sent to Dupin Christian Outreach Ministries, and the offering is used to help provide especially weekend food for school children in Duplin County, and today we take up that offering, and we thank you for your contributions. invite Clayton and Casey Hall to come forward and to bring their son Cooper and their daughter Kate is coming up with them and also to ask Elder Jason Rouse who's representing the session to come forward as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism.
in our litany of reaffirmation of our baptismal vows, we, we talked about rejecting evil and turning to Jesus Christ. And that's part of the symbolism of baptism in the water of making us clean and also the spirit of Christ that makes us clean in our lives. Through the sacrament of baptism, the church declares its faith in the crucified and risen Jesus Christ and reasserts his claim to every human life. Through this act, we receive Cooper Hall into the fellowship of the church and we care for him as a member of God's family. By bringing their child for baptism today, Clayton and Casey give expression to their own faith in Jesus Christ and the promise that what is done here shall be no empty ritual but the sign and seal of God's love for them and their own love and worship of God. Above all, through this act, Christ himself renews his own claim on Cooper, on all of us, on every human being, and for the whole human life. We baptize Cooper today with the hope and prayer that one day he will make his own profession of faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. In the baptism of this child, we are reminded that we have all been claimed for Christ and we commit ourselves again to live in his love, which we know through his death on the cross. And therefore, by sharing in this sacrament, we take on ourselves the responsibility to play our part in the proclamation of Christ's love to the very ends of the earth. On behalf of the session, I present Cooper Clayton Hall, son of Clayton and Casey Hall, for the sacrament of baptism. Clayton and Casey, I have these questions to ask of you. Do you desire to have Cooper be baptized? Do you reaffirm your own faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, do you? Do you claim God's covenant promises on Cooper's behalf? And do you look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation as you do for your own, do you? Do you now unreservedly promise in humble reliance upon God's grace to set before Cooper an example of the new life in Christ, do you? And finally, do you promise to pray with and for Cooper and to bring him up in the knowledge and love of God, do you? Do we, the members of the congregation, in the name of the whole church of Jesus Christ, undertake with Clayton and Casey the Christian nurture of Cooper, so that in the due time he may confess his faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Will we endeavor by our example and fellowship to strengthen his family ties with the household of God? If you're able to stand, I invite you to do so. Uh, let us all join in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we give you thanks that in countless ways you have shown yourself and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of the sea you led your people out of bondage into the promised land. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who was baptized for us in the Jordan, anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. We thank you that through his baptism of death and resurrection, you have set us free from sin and death and give us rebirth. We praise you that in baptism, you give us your Holy Spirit, who give us all gifts that we might be your people. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water. We pray that Cooper, who now passes through these waters, 
will be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. We pray that you will guard him from all evil, strengthen him to serve you with joy until the day you make all things new. We ask these things in Christ our Lord. Amen. Cooper Clayton Hall, Jesus Christ came, gave his life for you, and was raised so that you might have new life, and you don't know that, but he did it for you and all of us, and we love because God first loved us. Put some water on Cooper Clayton Hall, child of the covenant, baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cooper Clayton Hall, you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and marked by God's Holy Spirit forever. You go for a walk. Kate, you want to walk with us? It's Cooper Clayton Hall and his big sister Kate. And I hope that you will not only in what you say, but more especially in what you do, teach him about Jesus Christ and his love. Turn around, go back to the way. And remember the promises you made for this little boy. You found the microphone. <laughs> and his parents. And we welcome you. God bless you. We have some gifts for you. This is his baptismal certificate, and I hope that you'll show that to him and talk with him over the years. And this is a gift from the Presbyterian women, the traditional symbol of baptism and the information about that. And then Vanessa has a gift for Cooper. to invite the children to join me up here for the children's sermon. Come right back up. <laughs> We're just going to stand up here so we can see. Them. I'll come stand over here so you can see the water. see all of you today. You know, Miss Nancy and I have two dogs, and the other day we were sitting in the den and she said, I think our dogs need a bath because they were been outside a lot. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to have to give the dogs a bath sometimes and use some water to get them clean. And you know, you know that's why we use water, to take a bath and to get clean. And we also use water to drink so that we can stay alive and feel better. And we also use water to help the plants grow. We've had a lot of water around here lately, haven't we? A lot of rain. And, um, but that we need it. And so today, in the baptism, I poured some water out of this pitcher, and I got the water out of the kitchen sink. It's not magic water, it's just water from the kitchen sink, and I poured it in this bowl before I baptized Cooper, and there's nothing magic about it, but it makes us think about God's love and about how Jesus was baptized and about how water makes us fresh and clean and gives us a new start. 
And that's why we baptize people. It doesn't have to be a little baby. It could be somebody any age. But it's a way to say we remember how God loves us and it makes us part of God's family. You can touch the water if you want to. Is it cold or wet? I mean, cold or wet. <laughs> cold or warm. It is cold. I'm, I tried not to make it cold. Oh, yeah, it's cooled off a whole lot. Yeah. Cooled down my hand. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a prayer together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the water that we have. When we're thirsty, it makes us feel better. When we're dirty, it makes us clean. Helps the plants to grow. Lord, thank you for the water of baptism. It reminds us of how much you love us in Jesus, your son. We pray in his name. Amen. Thank you all for coming up.
illumination was inadvertently left out of the bulletin, so I'd like to offer it on our behalf. Let us pray. Creator Spirit, who hovered over the waters at creation's birth, who descended in the form of a dove at Jesus' baptism, who was poured out under the signs of fire and wind at Pentecost, Come to us, open our hearts and minds so that we may hear the word of life and be renewed by your power. For you live and reign with God in Christ now and forevermore. Amen. the insert in your bulletin. Please join me in the responsorial setting for Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Hymn is hymn number 795, Healer of Our Every Ill.
Ele. Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 6. It's the conclusion of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. I invite you to hear the Word of God. <clears throat> but I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out that speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. And God... Bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the conclusion to his Sermon on the Mount and our Sermon on the Plain in Luke 6, Jesus shares more than 20 short teachings about how to live. Taken separately, each of them makes a good bumper sticker or an interest on an entry on Pinterest. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge. Do not condemn. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? But when you take all of Jesus' sayings together, what do they mean for your life and mine? As many of you know, I've kept a quote journal since Christmas of 2003. This week I decided to look through my journal and find what different people have said that might be commentary on the ideas Jesus shared with his disciples 
and the crowds out there on that level place. It's an unusual approach to preaching, but I'd like to share some of what I found. If there's any particular order in what's getting ready to come, it's that I move from the slightly cynical to the more thought-provoking to, at least for me, the most convicting. Some of the quotes refer to the teachings of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew rather than the Sermon on the Plain in Luke, but the sentiments are the same. And occasionally I'll throw in something I found in my reading this week that hasn't yet made it into the quote journal, but most probably will. Let's begin with a cover of a Wizard of Id comic book from the early 1970s. The king of Id stands on the palace balcony and addresses his peasant subjects. Remember the golden rule. Somebody in the crowd asks, what's that? And another peasant says, whoever has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> on the other hand, there's the platinum rule. Do unto others as God has done unto you. This one is attributed to any number of people, including Steve Martin. Before you judge someone, walk a mile in his shoes. That way, you'll be a mile away from him and you'll have his shoes. <laughs> but a more serious version of that can be found in To Kill a Mockingbird, when Atticus Finch tells Scout, you never really know a man until you understand things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. This one used to be posted at the registration desk in Dr. Mott Blair's office when it was located just a few blocks down on East Main Street. There is some bad in the best of us, and there is some good in the worst of us, but there's not enough good in any of us to talk about the rest of us. Our own Earlene Sutherland shared this gem with me the other day. Spite work does not pay. Think about that. Spite work does not pay. In one of his sermons, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. quoted an unknown preacher. Lord, we ain't what we want to be. We ain't what we ought to be. We ain't what we're going to be. But thank God we ain't what we used to be. And Dr. King's reflection on who we are as people redeemed in Jesus Christ offers us hope and echoes Jesus' teachings about what it means to be children of the Most High God. But of course, you and I both know how resistant we can be to the kind of change that is needed to live the kind of life Jesus is talking about in his Sermon on the Plain. Flannery O'Connor, the 20th century short story writer from Georgia, commented in one of her letters, all human nature vigorously resists grace because grace changes us and the change is painful. A hundred years earlier, the great Russian writer Leo Tolstoy said pretty much the same thing. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Eleven years ago, in February of 2008, the big pink house in Watha, just down the road from us, was the scene for the filming of Sue Monk Kidd's story, The Secret Life of Bees. In her novel, she writes this, people in general would rather die than forgive. It's that hard. If God said in plain language, I'm giving you a choice, forgive or die, a lot of people would go ahead and order the coffin. And this one showed up on my Facebook feed just this week. Be kind to people, not because of who they are, but because of who you are. So it's probably time to move away from the bumper sticker variety of quotes and consider some ideas that I've collected that are deeper commentary on what Jesus is getting at in this Sermon on the Plain, and an overarching umbrella kind of idea about what it means to live according to Jesus' teachings can be found in this observation. We act, we act in the world as it is on behalf of the world as it should be.
we act on in the world as it is on behalf of the world as it should be. As the young priest in the small French village comes to realize in the thought-provoking movie Chocolat, he says, we can't go around measuring our goodness by what we don't do. And he says this in his Easter Sunday sermon after he has thrown away his carefully crafted and prepared manuscript which he had taken to receive the mayor's stamp of approval. We can't go around measuring our goodness by what we don't do. Reverend Jason Davenport, who spent four years here at the Wallace Presbyterian Church when his dad was the minister, posted on Facebook years ago, we aren't called to be like other Christians, we are called to be like Christ. And I remember contacting Jason and asking him to send me that quote because as so often happens when I went looking for it in my Facebook feed, I couldn't find it. But Jason points us in the right direction. We're not called to act like other Christians. We're called to be like Jesus Christ. And Jesus' teachings are about how to live as God's people. Ernest Best puts it this way, the gospel is not a set of abstract truths to be announced, but a way of life to be lived. In another way, William Platcher, in a book he writes called Struggling with Scripture, says, if we study the whole Bible, its central concerns come through clearly enough. We learn that we are all sinners, that God loves us anyway, and that knowing our salvation rests on grace frees us to live in the service of God without worrying about how we will be rewarded. Dr. Amy Jill Levine is a Jewish professor of New Testament studies at Vanderbilt University Divinity School in Nashville. She wrote a most interesting book called The Misunderstood Jew, The Church and the Scandal of the Jewish Jesus. And in it, she writes about the kingdom of heaven, which is what Jesus is talking about. And she says, the kingdom of heaven is not for the Jewish Jesus of Nazareth, a piece of real estate for the single saved soul. It is a communal vision of what could be and what should be. It is a vision of a time when all debts are forgiven, when we stop judging others, when we not only wear our traditions on our sleeves, but we also hold them in our hearts and in our minds and enact them with all our strength. In 1980, Reverend Eugene Peterson, who produced the much beloved and used version of the Bible called The Message, wrote a book called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction, Discipleship in an Instant Society. And this is how he described the meaning of the gospel for the people of God then and today. He writes, the truth of God explain their lives, the grace of God fulfill their lives, the forgiveness of God renewed their lives, the love of God blessed their lives. On Wednesday afternoon, my good friend Bill Goodnight came through the door of the church office building calling out, eggs, eggs, the egg man is here, I've got fresh eggs. He didn't know I was sitting in my study. He's the pastor of the Potts Memorial and Oak Plain Presbyterian Churches. He also raises chickens, and he brings his, their eggs to us to give away in our Helping Hands food pantry. Well, he stuck his head in, and we started talking, and he said, so how are you preaching on the Beatitudes this week? And he wanted to, understand, wanted to know how I understand what it means to say someone is blessed, like in the, such as in the Beatitudes from last week. And I told Bill, I don't think Jesus was saying, do all of these things, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, don't judge, don't condemn, et cetera, et cetera. Do all these things so you can go to heaven. I don't think that's what Jesus is saying at all. I don't think Jesus was saying, do all of these things in order to be blessed. Instead, I think Jesus was describing what it means to live as God's people in God's kingdom right here and right now. It's a blessed kind of life. And then I shared with Bill my favorite quote in the collection that I put together for today's sermon, and it comes from Dallas Willard, 
who was an American philosopher who wrote much about Christian spiritual formation, about the gospel, and I also think about Jesus' teachings in his Sermon on the Plain. Dallas Willard wrote, the gospel is less about how to get into the kingdom of heaven after you die and more about how to live in the kingdom of heaven before you die. There must be value in hearing Jesus' teachings as distinct, pithy little sayings, but I think an inevitable danger lurks in hearing them that way. We either turn Jesus' teachings and call about what it means to live as God's people in the kingdom of God before we die into some kind of to-do list in order to earn God's favor or God's love. Kind of like a checklist to get into heaven. Or else we end up using such a list to compare ourselves to other people. Well, you know, I may not always love my enemies and I may not always keep from judging other people, but at least I'm not like so-and-so. But you know, I could have preached a much shorter sermon this morning. After reading the gospel lesson, I could have simply said, go and do likewise. And maybe I could have added, good luck. But that would have been an irresponsible use of Scripture, not to mention an ultimately frustrating experience for all of us. Don't get me wrong, we ought to do and go likewise as Jesus teaches us. But we need to go and do likewise only when we depend first and foremost on God's grace in Jesus Christ. Several weeks ago, I planned my preaching according to the lectionary readings. Luke 6, 27 to 49 is the reading for this seventh Sunday after Epiphany. However, I didn't know I was going to be baptized in Cooper Hall today. I did not coordinate my sermon with Cooper's baptism. Today was the day that worked best for his family. But isn't it wonderful to hear Jesus' teachings about our way of life in God's kingdom on the same day that Clayton and Casey bring Cooper to be baptized? In light of what Jesus has to tell us, what Jesus commands us about what life in God's kingdom is like, it was appropriate that we used our time of confession for the renewal of our baptismal vows. Those vows, whether we originally made them on our own or they were claimed on our behalf, are the well-built foundation of God's grace, mercy, love, forgiveness, and call in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Think about what Jesus taught about being children of the Most High and then remember the final vow we renewed this morning. Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciples, trusting in His promises, obeying His word, honoring His church, and showing His love as long as you live? As I was reading for today's sermon, I came across a word to preachers, maybe a warning, to preachers trying to figure out how to preach on Jesus' teachings. And I love it said, no one comes to church on Sunday morning already thinking, I would really like a challenge today. Perhaps I'll be asked to love my enemy. And yet we have come to church this Sunday, and we hear Jesus say exactly that and a lot of other things. Someone has said this about what Jesus teaches. The text is gospel or good news for the committed, but anyone with a low level of commitment will think that this good news is just bad advice. The good news, especially today as we celebrate Cooper's baptism and remember our own, but also every day, the good news is this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Amen. Let us pray. God of goodness and mercy, be the light of our salvation and sustain us. We submit to your will that we should love you with our everything and love our neighbors. 
and even our enemies as ourselves. Renew us and transform us by your steadfast love into the people of God. Amen. Those of you who are dog people can appreciate this, and even if you're not, you can appreciate for Bob and Dottie Obenauer, who lost their beloved dog Tucker yesterday, who had been diagnosed with stomach cancer. And they love that dog, and it's just another blow in what they and others have gone through. So let us pray for Bob and Dottie. And I'd like to ask you to pray for our elders and ministers Presbytery staff members who will be attending the Presbytery meeting on Saturday in Laurenburg. The Elder Christy Johnson and I will represent our congregation. Let us pray together. God of grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have given us new life in the waters of baptism. Strengthen us to live in righteousness and true holiness that we may grow into the likeness of your Son. Pour out your Spirit upon us that all who have been raised to new life with Christ in baptism may, in everything we say and do, show forth the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy on us. Remember the promises you made to us in our baptism. Forgive our sinful ways and heal our brokenness. Set us free from all that enslaves us and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ that we may be your faithful servants. Show forth your healing love to the world, always to the glory of your name. Creator God, we bless your holy name. May we remember the promises of our baptisms to renounce all spiritual forces of evil that rebel against you, to turn from all sinful desires that draw us from your love, to turn to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to be Christ's faithful disciples, trusting in his promises, obeying his word, honoring his church, showing his love, and to teach the children of our church about your love by what we say and most especially by what we do. Gracious and loving God, we pray for Bob and Dottie in their time of sadness on Tucker's passing. We pray that you'll be with them. And we continue to pray for all those who are still in recovery from Hurricane Florence. We pray for their spirits. We pray for them, for your will to be done. And we pray for people who are helping them. Lord, give us grace. Lord, we pray for the elders and ministers and staff people who will be attending the Presbytery meeting on Saturday. Lift up Christy as she goes from our church. We pray for Reverend Gerard Lowry, our new general presbyter, as he is installed. Lord, give us a vision of a broader ministry beyond our walls as we work together in southeastern North Carolina and throughout the world. Oh Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might lead lives worthy of the calling to which you have called us with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings. <laughs>
of love and compassion. How easy the road of discipleship would be if all you asked from us were the gifts we bring in this offering. How convenient it would be if we could write a check or swipe a card and leave it at that. Lord, remind us again as we present our tithes and offerings that the real challenge of discipleship comes when we leave this place. As you send us into the world to respond in love to those who would judge us, hurt us, and threaten us. We pray this in the name of Jesus who loved and forgave even as he was dying on a cross for our sins. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 353. stay and taste the chilies and eat lunch and enjoy some fellowship and remember the donation is to support youth from this church who are going to attend triennium this summer which is Montreat on steroids Montreat youth conference about 6,000 plus uh, senior highs at Purdue for a week of fellowship and nurturing in their faith so that's what the chili cook-off is supporting today Let's have a blessing together. Gracious God, we thank you for blessing us in the worship here today. And we ask you to bless our fellowship around the tables and to bless um, Elizabeth and Madeline and Zach as they make their plans to go to Triennium. Thank you for your goodness and love for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.